my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus my greetings to one and all today i want to continue with you in matthew's gospel and we are dealing with chapter 4 in our last class we dealt with the trials of our lord jesus christ in the wilderness so in matthew chapter 4 is the beginning of the ministry of our lord jesus christ in chapter 4 verse 12 through 17 we are going to study these verses when jesus went to galilee after john was cast into prison there people who were in darkness saw a great light then jesus began to preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand as what uh, the scripture says according to john's gospel the story of christ's life intervene or interfere between the temptation of our lord jesus and uh, the preaching in galilee there is a gap between these two so matthew doesn't fulfill this gap but john gospel and other gospels also written some of the verses that links to uh, the that the fulfills that gaps like you know jesus first appearance after his temptation was when john pointed to him and said behold the lamb of god so after jesus baptism in third chapter in fourth chapter he was uh, taken by the holy spirit to the wilderness for temp- to be tempted by satan and after temptation matthew immediately says john was cast into prison then he preached he went to galilee and began to preach but that was not the geo- uh, chronological order because he writes in the uh, biographical order so he meets john the baptist so john beholds him and says behold the lamb of god and he is, he addresses to his disciples and then what happened chapter 1 john chapter 1 verses 38 through 51 jesus calls the first group of his disciples andrew john peter philip and nathaniel uh, and then he went to a wedding a cana of galilee he uh, from jordan to galilee he traveled there after that he went up to jerusalem to the passover and then he discoursed with nicodemus and then he, he had conversation with the uh, women of samaria and after that he returned to galilee and preached there so but these events Uh, Matthew did not I mean he, Matthew just skipped all these events because Matthew begins his story from the from the from where he began his public ministry where he preached the gospel to the Galilee the time when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison then he went into Galilee that's what Matthew 4:12 says that means he has given enough time for John to prepare a way for the lord christ did not go into the country until he heard of john's imprisonment in chapter 4 uh, matthew chapter 4 verse 12 through 15 i'll read now when he heard that john had been arrested he withdrew into galilee and leaving nazareth he went and lived in capernaum by the sea in the territory of zebulun and naphtali so that what was spoken by the prophet isaiah might be fulfilled the land of zebulun and the land of naphtali the way of the sea beyond the jordan galilee of the gentiles see here after john was arrested jesus went to galilee from nazareth to galilee sorry and he settled in capernaum capernaum is a place called the village of nahum Kapar means village and uh, Nahum means Nahum where the prophet Nahum was uh, born and brought up there so uh, this also fulfills Isaiah's prophecy Isaiah said that in the land of Zebulun and Naphtali the way of the sea beyond the Jordan Galilee of the Gentiles so Jesus went and settled in Galilee of the Gentiles so the land has two sections you need to understand that the land has two sections upper galilee and lower galilee upper upper galilee refers to the gentiles territory and lower galilee refers to nazareth okay jews people 
So, in Genesis chapter 35 verses 23 to 26, Zebulon and Naphtali were two of Jacob's sons. Galilee was given to Naphtali and Zebulon. Now, you can see it in Joshua chapter 13 through 21. When Canaan was divided to all the tribes by Lot, the Lot came upon uh, Zebulon and Naphtali. So, they ha uh, after Joshua, we studied that in uh, our verse by verse studies in, in Tamil. You can refer those uh, studies. And uh, in Judges too, in Judges also we have studied already. In Judges, what happened is, uh, they have to get rid of all the Canaanites. When the land was divided, still Canaanites were living there. So, their responsibility is to rid them of from their land, but they did not do that, Zebulun and Naphtali did not do that. So, what happened there the population was mixed, mixed of Gentiles and uh, Jews and after they exiled to Babylon, again when they came back from Babylon, again the, the population was mixed. So, Galilee was the only area in Israel where Jews and Gentiles could live happily together in Israel. So, this Galilee represents the mission to all the world. You see there in Galilee verse 16 says Matthew chapter 4 verse 16 says the people which sat in darkness saw great light and to them which is which sat in the region and shadow of death light is sprung up. So, when Jesus went to preach in Galilee people who were sitting in darkness saw a great light. So, when people saw him, light was not seen in his face that we should understand. So, his character and ministry revealed as light there. So, John illustrates Jesus Christ as light in his gospel. You see John chapter 1 verse 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness overcame it not overcame means comprehended not, they did not comprehend him, they did not understand him that he was the Messiah. Verse 7 and 8 here it says John was that John was not that light, but he came to witness that light is the true light. And John chapter 3 verses 19 through 21 says light came into this world, but men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So, men loved darkness rather than the light. So, that is why they did not comprehend the light. And in John chapter 8 verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in the darkness, he said. So, this in this chap same chapter, chapter 8 verse 20 indicates where the statement was made. So, these words spoke Jesus in the treasury. Verse 20 says, these words Jesus spoke in the treasury. That means, Jesus was in the temple. When he was in the temple, he spoke these words. So, during the time of tabernacle, Jesus was in the temple. So, the, the, the tabernacle, the, the feast of tabernacle is also called the feast of light, illumination, it is also called illumination. So, decorating the uh, temple with the grand lights, okay, lights means it is not serial lights, uh, some kind of uh, wax, you no know, candles and all, they were decorating those things. So, Jesus saw them and saw their uh, decorations and he says, I am the true light, I am the light of this world, not these things what you have decorated over there. So, those who follow me will not walk in the darkness, he said. So, there is a uh, lot of uh, you know, difference between darkness and, and, and the light. When Solomon describes this in chapter, in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 19, he says, the way of wicked is like deep darkness. They know not at what they stumble. They know not what they stumble because they are walking in the deep darkness. But righteous are not like that. 
in verse 18 the path of just is like the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day so the path of uh, righteous is like a shining light that grows more and more unto the perfect day you see here the darkness the walking in the darkness representing a sinful man the society of the world the hypocrites of the christians or jews is pictured as walking in darkness in matthew chapter 6 verse 23 jesus said if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness how great is that darkness you see if therefore the light that is in thee become darkness how great is that darkness so he talks about the whole body being filled with darkness so brethren here darkness is representing satan those who walk in the darkness representing they are walking in the sinful life so in luke he, he clearly explains in luke 22 53 jesus says when i was daily with you in the temple he stretched forth no hands against me but this is your hour and the power of darkness so this is your hour and the power of darkness so behind every evil is the power of darkness they came to arrest jesus okay that's because the power of darkness which is mean satan behind every evil there is a person who is called satan but in second corinthians 4:6 paul says for god has, for god who commanded the light to shine out of darkness that shone in our hearts so god had commanded light out of darkness and now that light shone in our hearts when god brought the light into this world it 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 was very useful for the whole mankind it does something very great things likewise when the light shone in our heart we can comprehend the knowledge of christ we can understand the knowledge of christ and we will become the light of this world we can produce the light to this dark dark of this world if you read it in a context in verse 4 it says the god of this world had blinded their minds so the whole people who are not believe in christ are blinded by satan and we are been no for we have been given the light to shone in our heart so that we should not hide it we should expose them that's why in ephesians 5:11 says i have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness the works of dark darkness has no fruits in ephesians 6:12 says we wrestle against the ruler, rulers of the darkness of this world we wrestle against the rulers of the darkness of this world even peter talks about it in first peter 2:9 god has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so out of darkness he has called us into marvelous light then paul writes to colossians chapter 1 verse 13 god translated us from the power of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son once upon a time we were in the darkness now god has translated translated us into the kingdom of his dear son so brethren the world are in darkness spiritual darkness and moral darkness and inability to change their behavior inability to know the truth that's what the darkness is representing here and in romans chapter 1 verse 21 says because when the new god they glorified him not as god but became vain in their imagination and their foolish art was darkened you see their foolish art was darkened so i want to give one illustration i want to tell one story about a doctor who was uh, mr brand his name was mr brand he was researching about the disease of leprosy and finally he came to know that it is like an anesthetic disease it is like anesthetic anesthetic means when 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 something happened to them they can't feel that pain that's what anesthetic we know when people do operation and all they put anesthetic anesthesia and they do those operation and all so a, a man called stanley stein he was became a blind after he was uh, 
been affected by the leprosy. So his face is numb and his hands are uh, numb but he has a habit of wash his face uh, e uh, every morning with a hot water and with uh, uh, washing cloth, hot washing cloth. He used to wash his uh, face every day and uh, eventually he was became a blind because uh, his eyes was burned. So, neither his face or his hands uh, not responded for that hot. When something hot, we taste the hot, we feel that hot so that we can feel that pain and we can escape from that uh, uh, hurt or harmful uh, 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 raises. But he could not able to feel that pain. So, he burned his uh, eyes and he was finally became a blind. The sin has the same effect in our lives, the, the numbness affecting. When you keep sinning, you become numbness in your sins. The sin, ignorance, unfruitful, adulteries, whatever the sins you commit and because of those sins, the power of darkness has blinds your mind. So, but Jesus is the day star, the bright morning star. That is the comparison you should see. Darkness represents Satan and the light represents Jesus Christ. In Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 says, The son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his beams. In his wings. He will arise uh, healing with his wings. And, and it is not to everybody those who fear the Lord. Those who fear the Lord, the son of righteousness will arise and they will heal our, our ignorance and, and sins. That is what happened in, in Galilee. Chapter 4 verse 16, the people who sat in darkness saw a great light and to them who sat in the region and shot of death, light is sprung up, light has dawned to them. So, what a blessed people they were. So, you see when Nazareth rejected Jesus, he came and settled in Capernaum. And there the people saw a great light. And then he began to choose his other set of apostles there in, in the Capernaum. So, and then chapter 4 verse 17 says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There are two things here brethren. So, first thing is repent. Why? Why we need to repent? Because darkness was upon you. Darkness was upon them. So, change your life. Get converted. That is the first thing we need to do. And then you become a part of the kingdom of God. If you repent and change your life and converted, you will become a part of God's kingdom. Yes, brethren. Everything fits in it. Without which you will miss Jesus Christ. Yes, salvation, forgiveness, love, justification by faith and knowledge, whatever the fruits we see in the Bible, it all fits in this one topic, the kingdom of God. One, one who misses this, you will miss totally Jesus Christ. That is so important brethren. Because John's preaching was about the kingdom of God, Jesus' preaching was about the kingdom of God, Apostles' preaching was the, about the kingdom of God, Jesus' parable was about the kingdom of God, Jesus' prayer was about the kingdom of God. The Jews missed this opportunity to enter into the kingdom of God. They were sinning, they were in darkness. You know the biggest sin in the Bible? is idolatry and next very close to is is oppressing the poor they were doing that and sexual immorality so christ brought the judgment upon them and justice to the poor in 70 a.d with the destruction of the temple and the city and the death of the nation came upon them god's power and glory and kingdom came upon with the power in 70 AD. I will speak in the future about the kingdom of God brethren. So, 
if you have any doubt about the kingdom of god or about the message we have spoken here right now you can contact me the number given in the description and uh, if you have any question we can discuss in the uh, the number given or the whatsapp you can email to me so may god bless you all thank you for listening amen we'll see you in the next week next subject amen